Leaders, have you ever thought about what is a good boundary and what is a bad boundary? What is a boundary that helps you lead well and be more effective? And what are the boundaries that can blow up in your face and you cross over and things go sideways? Well, today we're going to talk about leadership boundaries, how to have good boundaries in your life so you can be a more effective leader to lead your organization to reach its full potential. Stick around. Hi, it's the Trigger, Rich Bond Trigger. Welcome back to another Leaders and Communicators, and today we are going to be talking about boundaries. I'm sharing for my 25 years as a pastor, as a leader, as a public speaker. I've had to figure out boundaries over the course of my time, and sometimes it's been really helpful, and sometimes it's been really hard to figure out. So today I'm going to share from my own personal experience to help you be a better leader and maintain healthy boundaries for you personally and for the people that you lead. As we get rolling today, take a moment, subscribe to my channel, hit that little bell right there, and when you hit the bell, you'll get notified of the next video, and you'll never miss another video along the way. Also, be sure to have a little comment in the question bar down below. Let me hear from you about the topic of boundaries. Do you find boundaries to be easy for you, or are boundaries kind of tough? Are you one of those people that are so closed off as a leader? <laughs> You've got a wall? It's a boundary. Or if you're one of those people that may be so open, you have no boundaries and you feel like you are just exhausted. Now, the first one is the boundary of attraction. As leaders, we know people will be attracted to us. We want them to be attracted to what we have to say about the ideas we have, the way we want to lead our organizations. There is a magnetism that happens as a leader. And some of the best leaders don't even have to try to have this. They naturally just ooze it out of them, and people will follow them. You want to have followers following your mission and dreams, your visions. You want people to be fully invested into it. Now, the thing is, you want to have people following you, but you don't want to be dependent on you. This boundary of attraction sometimes can cross over into a negative space where they are so dependent on you, they are so attracted to you, they don't think for themselves, they don't act for themselves, they become robots instead of important people on your team to help you to mobilize, to achieve your goals. Be careful, leaders, to not be such a magnetic leader that you have a bunch of zombies on your team. Now, boundary number two is the boundary of dreaming. Dreamers are a very important part of any team you assemble. Any organization, you need to have people that will dream dreams with you. But one of the big things that we do often as leaders is we ask for dreamers, we ask for input, and then we sit behind our executive desk. We sit behind and say, no, can't do it. Sorry, that's a good idea, Ted, but we're just not ready for that. We actually set up a boundary of no more than the boundary of yes. Do you want innovators on your team? Don't limit your team by creating a false boundary of, I want your help, but I'm never going to take it. Now, the third boundary is a very important one. We're talking about the relationship boundary. As leaders, you need to have relationship with your people. Now, as your organization grows, you realize you cannot be friends with everybody. But you do have to be friends with some people. Some leaders like to just close the door, seal themselves off, and they don't have any relationships of value with anyone in their organization. Let me use the example from the Bible. Now, Jesus had many friends. The crowds followed him all the time. Now, he had 12 disciples, 12 students he was mentoring, and they were special and close. He had a high relationship with 12 disciples. But he had three that were in the inner circle that were deeply wired in, in touch, and on a different level of relationship. You need to figure out leaders at what level you can do relationship with people. And as your mission grows, as your organization goes, those relationships will change over time. Some people you had in the inner circle are going to have to be moved out of the inner circle, and some people that were never in will have to move into this new relationship. 
there will be a moving boundary line and you need to figure out how to do this. And the reason you do that is because sometimes people will zap more energy off of you. There will be people that will take more than what you can allow them to take and you will become an ineffective leader. So leaders, you have to figure out the boundaries of relationship. Make yourself accessible, but don't make yourself so accessible that you are drained and zapped from leading more effectively. Now the fourth and final boundary I want to talk about is limit boundaries. This is similar to the dreaming, but it's a little bit different. One of the things I value as a leader is I want to make more leaders. I want to develop, increase, release people to greater responsibilities. Now this may seem like a threat to your leadership, so let me push in a little bit with you. The idea is to make leaders to go be better leaders. Sometimes we can be the limiter on this. We can limit their ability and keep them in the box and not let them really grow to the next level. We, we don't let them really show their full potential. We don't let them take the lead on a project that you can lead effectively, but the truth is you should have them do it to let them go up. This is all based on fear. The limit of leadership here is fear-based. We're afraid that we're going to lose our leadership, and they're afraid that they will never get the chance to fully shine within your organization. Leaders, you can be the lid on your organization. You can be the thing that keeps it from flying and soaring. Let me challenge you. Take off the lid and let your leaders go to the next level. So, how do you do as a leader with boundaries? Do you have no boundaries at all? Or are your boundaries so tight, nothing effective is getting done? I want to give you a tool. Let me recommend this book. It's called Boundaries for Leaders. I'm going to put a link down below in the description. And you can go down, hit the link, and you can order that book directly. It's got much more information about other boundaries that will make you achieve your goals as a leader for your organization, for your mission. Sometimes we just need to learn how to be healthier as leaders to help the organization be healthier to do the best it can do. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, give me a question, give me a comment down below. How good are you with boundaries? Until next time, I'm the Trigger, Rich Bond Trigger. God bless and have a great week.